Do you remember when the Street Profits were cool? Do you remember when tag teams and a faction won tag team titles? Do you remember the last time WWE had a ladder match on WWE Raw for the, a title? At first time, remembers. I remember. This show is absolutely atrocious. The fact that you have an opening promo, which is obvious, and then the very next match is a ladder match. The very first match of the show is a ladder match for the United States Championship. In a feud that has been the closest thing to a blood feud we have had in a while. And you give the main event to Rusev, Lashley, Lana, and Liv Morgan. Does anyone else see what's wrong with this picture here? The ladder match. Something that has been building for weeks, months, if not a year. This, could, this is obviously the culmination of this feud. This was the end of this feud. Because of how, what happened after the match. And it's the first match on the show. Are you kidding me? This just irks me to no end. Then you have the Street Profits. I remember when the Street Profits had their street talk. They'd go out there, they seem natural, they seem cool. They seem like a great fucking team. Now they're doing the Monday after weekend update. Down two. Why? Why are we subjected to this garbage? Ricochet embarrassing himself by confronting Brock Lesnar only to get hit in the flame of jewels. To that awful tag team main event, mixed tag team main event, which I'm not even really going to go over because I don't care. Lana, Lashley, Rusev, Lana, and um, Liv Morgan, I don't care about. It's funny because the WWE, the WWE on Fox Twitter account brought out the fact that the Super Bowl this year is Super Bowl 54, which of course is um, Roman Noodles L.I.V., which would be if they would have Liv Morgan, she would have been perfect for advertising because it'd be Super Bowl Liv. Get it? The stuff that was like, if you would have had her on SmackDown, she'd be in a better position than she is on Raw. Anything he does. On SmackDown, what is it on SmackDown? Is better than this garbage on Monday Night Raw. What the hell is this company thinking? This show is an abomination. This show sucks. The only thing good in WWE main roster right now is is Manny Rose and Otis, and that's on SmackDown. Elias, if you like to hear him saying every once in a while, is sucked in the stomach as well. Nothing else on main roster television is worth a damn. I would like to say Drew McIntyre, but I'm not getting my hope up, the hopes up for Drew McIntyre because I honestly think they're just going to go out there and have this guy be a loser at the Royal Rumble. This guy should have all the momentum in the world going into the Royal Rumble, and they're probably going to squander it. So the show starts off with Seth Rollins and his group. We still don't have a name for it. They march to the ring. He takes the mics. He wants everyone to know that they have played a small part in making him the man he is today. Rollins says without them, there is no Monday Night Raw Messiah. Oh, if that's the case, then I think everyone should just leave. He thanks everyone for believing him for support for all the faith that placed in him to lead Raw to the future as a premier program in WWE. That, I'm sorry, Monday Night Raw is not on Wednesday. Monday Night Raw doesn't have Heath Lee versus Roger Strong this Wednesday. Or... Finn Balor versus Johnny Gargano at TakeOver Portland. No, that's, that's NXT. NXT is the premiere and has always been, since 2014 at least, has been the premiere show in WWE. He wants to thank Buddy Murphy for what happened last week, for opening his eyes. He, member, he introduces Murphy as a member of the fans. Rollins goes on and addresses Owens and Samoa Joe. They, they eventually come out. Big Show is out. I guess the last week was his write-off of the show. Uh, Owens comes out. He mentions how Big Show will be back to deal with Rollins eventually, but forget to take out Rollins, Owens, and Joe. They want to have a fight. They... Rollins is like, we're not going to fight right now. We have to pick a time and a place. And Joe's like, the time and a place is now. <clears throat> and you didn't hear me. I said, I want to fight. We want to fight, but we're not only ones who want to fight. And they bring out the tag team champions of the Viking Raiders. So all four members of the baby faces go down to the ring. They brawl with the heels, send them away, and that's how the first segment ended. Typical WWE main roster opening segment. Now, it doesn't 
Now it, um, hmm, what I want to say. It's just typical WWE booking, and um, I guess I could say it's not typical WWE booking as well, because usually with something like this, with the fact that the Viking Raiders came out, you would have, you would have an eight-man tag match. That's usually what you would lead to, but we didn't get an eight-man tag match. What we got later was much, much worse. So, again, the first match of the show is a ladder match. United States Champion Rey Mysterio versus Andrade. It has been 13 years since, according to Big Joseph, 13 years since the last ladder match on Monday Night Raw for a championship. Why is this not going on last? Why is this not the main event of the show? I still don't get this logic. Like Luna, Lana, Lashley, and Rusev have not brought have not brought in the ratings. It's not helping them keep the audience. Everyone's leaving, and yet they put them on last because they want to. Because yeah, people don't want to sit there and you know watch a ladder match in the main event. You know, a title that obviously means nothing because if it meant something, this would main event the show. But no, we get it here. But before we get that. Seth Rollins and his crew are backstage. Charlie Caruso stops them, and he a, makes a challenge to the Viking Raiders for the tag team titles and say he'll be teaming up with his new disciple, Buddy Murphy. They walk off as AOP follows. It looked like AOP was like, it looked for a second that AOP had a look of, why aren't we getting the tag titles shot? We're the tag team of this group. Why aren't we getting the title shot? Why is Buddy Murphy getting the shot? Why is Seth Rollins getting the shot? I might be reading too much in that, but it just looked like that's what it, it just looked like they were. A little confused, why are they not getting the tag team title shot when they should be getting the tag team title shot since they, you know, are the tag team of the group? But we have the ladder match, and good ladder match. These guys never disappoint, it seems like. I don't think we've ever talked about these guys having a disappointing match. But they have themselves a good match here. The finish comes down to Vega getting on top of the ladder as Rey Mysterio is up trying to get the title. She stops him. Andrade gets up and hits him. There's a ladder up. They're standing on a ladder. There's another ladder on the, on the, on the turnbuckle just sitting there. Hammerlock DDT into the ladder. Holy shit chant. Andrade is laying in the ladder. He finally gets up, climbs up, grabs the title, and wins the match. After the match, Andrade brings the, bat, the title back down and celebrates with Vega. She brings the pan up, trying to get this concrete exposed. He's going to hit the hammerlock DDT on the concrete, but somebody wearing a Rey Mysterio mask comes out, and it is actually, he pulls it off, and it's Humberto Carrillo. They start brawling, and Andrade retreats up the ramp. Humberto checks on Rey as fans view the champion, and we go to commercial break. Now, this tells you two things. One, Rey Mysterio just had his final shot at the title, as he should. He's lost three times. He lost the championship. He lost the rematch. I believe he lost another match. Like, and then he lost. And now it's Hermitus' turn. So, Rey Mysterio is supposed to be eventually joining the um, babyface team of Owens and Samoa Joe to take on the AOP and the Messiah and Buddy Murphy. That is yet to be seen. So, Alistair Black. Oh boy. This guy goes and takes on an enhancement talent with no name. Jobber charges, black mass, if you blink, you missed it. One, two, three. He goes from Buddy Murphy versus Buddy Murphy versus Buddy Murphy versus Buddy Murphy to enhancement talents. Yawn. Give me a break. Get something for Alistair Black. You got something for Buddy Murphy. Now get me something for Alistair Black. As it comes down to the ring, we have that next. And they have the little, they have the little thing with um, Paul Heyman doing the same old shtick. He talks about how Lesnar is the only man, no one's worthy of him, and out comes Ricochet for some reason. I don't get why this happened. Why Ricochet was coming out here? There was rumor of something about Ricochet maybe getting a WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble. It was a rumor that he might be the guy to challenge Brock Lesnar. Why? I don't know. Ricochet has not done a thing to earn a title shot. Yes, it would probably be an excellent match between the two. But what has Ricochet done? He comes out. He wants to fight with him. He calls him. He says he's scared. And he, he's a low blow. So, what did we learn there? The fact that Ricochet is stupid. They make Ricochet look dumb. 
Why would Ricochet go out there and make a fool of himself like that? I don't know. But all I know is Ricochet looked like an idiot coming out of this. Randy Orton is backstage. He gives props to Drew McIntyre as he has... He, Charlie Caruso asks him what his thoughts on people saying Drew McIntyre is on par with Randy Orton. Randy Orton says he's not on par with me. Because it's impossible to be on par with a man who can strike out of nowhere in the three most dangerous sliders. The fans in the arena do finish for RKO for him and he walks off. And then we get this match, Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. These guys working well together, but it's all for naught as the OC decide to make their make their presence known. They end up fighting off the OC with the chair, Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton do. So basically you have these guys going out there, give yourself a match, and the OC make a, make a deal out of it. They chase them off. Okay, go on nowhere to Drew McIntyre after everything's all settled down. He grabs a mic, and Drew says he should have hit Orton with a claymore and says that one's on me, but it won't happen again, and they won't, and they aren't, and they're not even. He says he prays to God that they're in, that Orton ends up in the ring with him together with him together in the Rumble on Sunday because claymore won't come out of nowhere. I'm going to kick your head off your shoulders, win the Rumble, and finally, after all this time, I'm going to main event WrestleMania, toss the mic. That is that. I still want to see Drew McIntyre win the Royal Rumble. Will he win the Royal Rumble? Most likely not, because WWE likes to be cruel. It's probably going to be Roman. It's probably going to be Roman. Charlotte so Flair backstage with Charlie Caruso, being confident about the Royal Rumble. I really don't care what Charlotte has to say. She's not a factor in anything important right now. She's not winning the Rumble. Her winning the Rumble would be stupid, even though I know WWE is chomping at the bit to give Charlotte Flair that one accolade they haven't been able to do that do yet. Charlotte Flair, 10-time Women's Champion. It's going to be 17 eventually, probably within the next two years. But WWE. And Vince McMahon would love nothing more than give her a Royal Rumble win so she can have that notch on her belt. She has Oscar Streak. She won against, um, she won the Women's Championship 10 times. She was, she main evented WrestleMania. Let's get her a Royal Rumble win now. That's what they want to do. I know it, you know it, and they just need to either get it over with or not. Becky Lynch versus Kyrie Sane. This, but before we get to the match, Becky Lynch is in the ring. He said, maybe it's Oscar who should be downing herself against Lynch, and maybe she is. Maybe that's the reason for the sneak attacks and why she's facing Oscar's tag team partner tonight. Lynch asked Oscar, did, uh, says, but Oscar did beat her last year, but who won in the end? Becky went on to make the headlines around the world, while Oscar went to YouTube to make soup. Lynch goes on to deliver another one to Oscar and says Oscar can't beat her anymore. Drops the mic, raises the title, and out come the tag team champions, Kyrie Sane, to fight her. This match was disappointing. Kyrie Sane, I don't know if she's still having effects of the concussion she had in December. I don't know if she misses home. I don't know if she misses taming with her uh, friend, Io Shirai. But Kyrie Sane does not look like she wants to be. Yeah, she doesn't look like the same woman that she was in NXT. She just doesn't seem to have that same oomph. Like, I don't know what it is. It just feels like there's something not there with Kyrie Sane. Like, she's just going through the motions. Like, she doesn't care as much as she used to. But she ends up getting put into the disarm her after the exploder. After she fights off her black exploder, she kicks, she gets a kick to the jaw. Lynch applies it to disarm her for the tap out win. After the bell, Oscar immediately hits the ring and there's a shining wizard. Oscar applies the Oscar lock and manhandles Lynch. Some fans as booze, uh, as some fans boo. Oscar plays the crowd for more booze, leaving Lynch on the mat. The tag team champion set to the stage as they Lynch to recover on the mat. He did it like it's just I don't know. There was rumors that Kyrie Sane and Io Shirai could be moving, could be going back to stardom when their contracts come up at the end of at the beginning of March. The talk of bringing Io Shirai to the main roster, who sounds not to be very happy in NXT, with well the way her character has been used over the last two years or the last year I should say, 
I probably wouldn't be happy either. Maybe it's the money. I don't know. But Harry Sane and Io Shirai could both be on their way out. It would be a damn shame because both of them are very talented. But I would not want to be. I would not want to be in that locker room if I'm not going to be used to my full potential. And honestly, I don't think either Kyrie Sane, Oscar, or Io Shirai are. We get the tribute video we got on Friday to Rocky Johnson, who passed away on Wednesday last week. Tyra Shriva stops the tag team champions, but they're upset with what just happened. They speak in Japanese, and Oscar then says Becky Lynch will not be ready for her to throw a rumble, and they laugh as they walk off. And then we get to the tag team, and this isn't even the main event. Raw tag team title match, Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy versus the Viking Raiders. Not even this is the main event. You had two title matches on this show and neither one main evented. Why? Why is Bobby Lashley, Rusev, and Lana getting main event after main event? They're getting the Baron Corbett Roman Reigns treatment. They get all the main events. Nobody wants to see these matches between these two guys or these segments. And yet they're getting main event after main event. Are you kidding me? This is an absolute joke. Anybody who works for this company should be ashamed of themselves, but we'll get to that later. These guys, these two teams, I still don't get it. The Viking Raiders lose the tag team title. The Viking Raiders suffer their only the third loss, but why isn't it to the AOP? Why is the AOP not getting the tag team title match? I don't get it. I don't fucking get this. You have two able body guys who should be going out there. We were all winning and waiting for the Viking Raiders versus the AOP. Two horse tag teams just butting heads, beating the hell out of each other, and we're not going to get that. Why? Because Vince McMahon said so. Well, it's hits a stomp as the referee's back is turned onto one of the Viking Raiders. Face first onto the apron as the referee isn't looking. Murphy, Murphy covers for the one, two, three, and we have new Raw Tag Team Champions. What can you say? Seth Rollins, Buddy Murphy, and the AOP say Roll Rollins says this is a new beginning, like he said. Rollins, he says Buddy Murphy was just fighting Alistair Black last week, and now he's a champion. Rollins says this is just the beginning because they will cement their dominance on Sunday when they, he wins the Royal Rumble match for the second year in a row, and they walk off celebrating. We get the Monday after weekend update. I am not even going over this. This is ridiculous. It's not fun comedy. Our truth doing him just being himself, that's fun comedy. This is not. The Street Profits again. Remember when they were full, cool? Remember when they were fun to watch? Remember when they were in NXT doing street talk and they were just the crowd loved what they were doing. Pepper Farm remembers. I remember this this sucks. I feel bad for Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford. These guys have to be pigeonholed to doing non-funny comedy segments. I, I, I can't even. I have no words to express how angry I am with this. The Street Profits were one of the best tag teams that you had in, in, in NXT. One of the fa crowd favorites in NXT. And you're having them come up to do Monday after the weekend updates. I know they're on uh, NBC Universal, and I know MC, NBC Universal has Saturday Night Live, but do we really need a Monday Night Raw version of Monday of, of, of Weekend Update? No, no, we do not. Cut this shit and let the Street Profits be the Street Profits, but the damage is done. Matt Hardy, in probably one of his last appearances for for Monday Night Raw, versus Eric Rowan. This guy, future Hall of Famer, one of the greatest tag team wrestlers of the of the of the Attitude Era and of the um, early Ruthless Aggression Era, one of the greatest of all time in the one of the greatest of all times, one of the greatest minds in wrestling, getting destroyed and squashed by Eric Rowan. This has got to be Matt Hardy's final straw. This guy is too talented, and it just feels like they're punishing him what Jeff has done and how Jeff has like just been a nuisance to WWE. They want to give Jeff Hardy all these pushes, give Jeff Hardy all these accolades, and the guy just cannot stay 
out of trouble. So who suffers in the end? Matt Hardy suffers in the end. So Matt Hardy gets beat. I, I, I can't even. So we get the video package, and if you hadn't sleep by now for the mixed tag team match, if you want to sleep by now, I'm sure you fell asleep during this entire video package. This was your main event. We, before we get to that, Simone Joe and Kevin Owens ask what's now next now for the tag team champions. Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy are in the Royal Rumble. Owens says he will deal with the titles later on, but now he will be in the Rumble as well, and he will do what it takes to win and make sure Seth doesn't win. Joe announces his spot in the Rumble as well. Makes it known that he would run through Owens if Owens is standing in his way as a shot at uh, WrestleMania. Owens nods his head and they walk off. We get more 24 hour 7, garbage, don't care, and then we get to our main event. Who cares? Rusev and Lana, Rusev, Rusev, Rusev and Liv Morgan lose as Rusev is distracted by Lana grabbing his leg, gets hit with a spear, and that is that. I don't care. I could care less if this match went on for 20 minutes, if this match went on for 10 minutes, if this match lasted 10 seconds. I don't care. This is garbage. You put a bona fide main event match at the start of the show. For this. For this. Vince McMahon, you should be ashamed of yourself, but I know you're not going to. Nobody in WWE cares what the fans want. Nobody in WWE will give what the fans want. They, Vince McMahon, just wants to do what Vince McMahon wants to do. And make a fool of Rusev. Make a fool of La Liv Morgan. Make a fool of Bobby Lashley. Make a fool of Lana, which Lana does that well on her own. This, man, this, this was your go-home show. The only positive, the only positive to this show, and there was only one positive, there was no... 16 person brawl, a 20 person brawl at the show, end of the show to end it. That's going to probably happen on Friday as it will happen on the final go home show before, us, before the Royal Rumble. We always get at least one. We always used to, used to get one, but it didn't happen. Ricochet looks like a bumbling idiot. I hope we're not leading to Ricochet versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania or anything because that would be absolutely foolish. I don't know who's winning the Royal Rumble. I have my thoughts on that. After SmackDown, I'm probably going to do SmackDown review and the Royal Rumble predictions as well. But that is Monday Night Raw. Hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Like or dislike this video. Find me on Twitter at The France Club. Find me on Twitch.tv slash The France Club. And I'll see you guys Wednesday or Thursday for AEW Bash at the Beach Part Dukes on the... On the on the Jericho cruise. Until then, my name is the Franz, and I'll see you guys later.